What's up guys, it's Matter here, and today we're gonna to be reacting to another Anton Shea Films video. So we're continuing the Checkmate Lincolnite series. I think this is the third, maybe the fourth video in the series. Uh, and this is Tariffs and Taxes, the real cause of the Civil War? Uh, question mark, exclamation mark. So yeah, I, I, <clears throat> this one I've heard mentioned briefly before, but not really too much. Uh, the U.S. used to have a lot of tariffs, so I can't really see that being a big deal. Although I guess it would depend on like you know how it relates to the cotton industry, but I'm not entirely sure. So anyway, link to the original video down below. Let's jump into it. Yes. Sean. What the hell is this? Yeah, come on, give me a kiss, big boy. <sighs> oh God, why? What is this? Ooh, you're making me wet. <laughs> what did hey, I just watch? Up? Now, Toon Shea, sir. <clears throat> it is time to make another episode of Checkmate Lincolnites, a wildly unpopular internet show. No, man, no. I am done talking about the Civil War. Oh, come on now, sir. Everybody wants you to do it. I don't care. I used to think that my Civil War videos could do some good, you know, but nobody's minds are getting changed. They either think I'm a Yankee butthurt soy boy or the second coming of hippie Jesus. You know, there's some... Yeah, uh, man, he, he's 99.9% uh, .9 of people, their entire... The thing is, like, these issues are so wrapped up in politics, even modern-day politics, and 99.9% .9 of people, their entire political opinion is based on what the party establishment says. Um or what the prevailing currents say within the party, even if it's not the establishment, right? Um, and probably the best example of this is the whole COVID thing, where the, the anti-vaxxer movement was, like, largely a left-wing hippie thing prior to COVID, and then it became, like, a right-wing thing, right? And now those same left-wing hippies, a lot of them are, like, very pro-big pharma, despite the fact that that was, like, one of the big... That was, like, one of the biggest left-wing things, not even 10 years ago, and now that's, like, a right-wing thing, right? So much of it just has to do with whatever the prevailing political winds say, that's the only way to change the minds of people. So if you want to change the minds of people, you have to change the minds of the political parties and the political party establishment or, you know, talking heads within them. Some people out there who call me a bread tuber. Bread tuber? Does that refer to Vino Farms early content? <laughs> Apparently it's just liberals who make YouTube videos. I, uh, no, bread tuber. <laughs> that's a little, li uh, not even a little bit disingenuous. That's like highly disingenuous. Bread tubers are like literally commies. Right? It's, uh, it's based off the book, The Conquest of Bread. Well, that's the silliest thing I've ever heard. I know, I'm just so over it. Oh, well, well, come now, sir. Well, that's no fun for anybody. No, 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 I mean it, man, I'm done. Just let me make my weird homoerotic Nazi videos in peace. Jesus. I'm sorry you feel that way, sir. I, I suppose I'll have to do it myself. And I can tell everyone how the war of Northern aggression was fought over tariffs and taxes. <laughs> I'm on my way. <laughs> Vaping. Man, did vaping just like die out? I haven't seen anyone vape in, it's gotta be like three or four years. It was like crazy popular there for a while and then I just never see anyone do it anymore. What you got there? Oh, uh, it's just a delicious bottle of Jack Daniels. I'm playing the whataboutism drink. That is an oxymoron. Jack Daniels is like the worst shit ever. I do not know how anyone drinks that. I swear, people that drink Jack Daniels just drink it because of the name recognition and it's like one of those things that like 15 year olds think makes them cool. I don't know how you can like the taste of Jack Daniels. Drinking game. Basically, whenever you try to divert the conversation by pointing out something bad the union did, I take a drink. That's ridiculous. You Yankees do that just as much as we do. Checkmate, Lincolnites. The program where we annihilate academic historical consensus in favor of true history, which my grandpappy revealed to me one Lee Jackson day after he had consumed an entire 12-pack of Natty Light all by himself. <laughs> Tonight, we shall reveal the true reason for Southern secession. Preserving slavery. 
Yeah, Civil War was fought over slavery. Not that the South is paying 80% of the taxes of the entire nation. What? <laughs> Cat got your tongue. Can't think of one of your pithy comebacks. No, I'm... I'm just trying to process what you... Yeah, that, that argument, I, I, I have no idea how you can try to make that argument when the majority of the population was in the North. Like, I believe that at the time, the North had over twice the population of the South. I might be a little bit off there, but they, they, the population was mostly in the North. What you just said. Uh, so that's not true. It's not even close to truth. It's not in a 50-mile radius of truth. Like, if you dropped an atomic bomb on truth, what you just said wouldn't even have radiation burns. See, in the days before the Civil War, income taxes, property taxes, sales taxes, those weren't really a thing. So when you're saying taxes, you're ref Yeah, in income tax wasn't a thing until, I believe, in the States. Uh, it's different depending on where you live. But in the States, I don't think it was a thing until the First World War, and it was supposed to be a temporary measure to pay for the war, and they just never got rid of it. Referring to tariffs on imports, which is how the federal government made its money. We actually have a record of most of the foreign goods imported into the United States just before the war in the annual report of the Chamber of Commerce of the state of New York. The report shows that from July 1859 to June 1860, $233.7 million worth of foreign goods were brought into the port of New York, of which $203.4 million were subject to tariffs. During that same time period, all other American ports combined took in just $128.5 million worth of goods, of which 76.5 million were subject to tariffs. The numbers don't lie. New York merchants were single-handedly paying 63.5% of all the federal government's revenue that year. And it wasn't just some anomaly. New York had provided nearly two-thirds of the government's revenue in the previous five years as well. That city was the government's biggest cash cow by a huge margin, followed only distantly by Boston in second place and New Orleans in third. I'm honestly surprised hey, New Orleans hey, was up there. Did you listen to a word I just said? The South left because of the moral tip. I, I guess New Orleans being up there does kind of make sense when you realize it's like the end of the Mississippi, so so much trade is going out. Um, yeah. The Union killed Indians and exiled Jews. Look up Judah P. Benjamin, the Jewish Confederate. <sighs> but why did the Federals fight? The Yankee mercantilism that was gonna be in trouble if the South won its independence. Oh no! They would have a next door competitor charging a 10% tariff compared to the moral tariff of 40%. There you go. Ooh. Checkmate, Lincolnites. That's the name of the program. You wanna talk about the moral tariff? Let's talk about the moral tariff. Put very simply, it was a reaction to the Panic of 1857, and it was meant to jumpstart the nation's struggling economy. It may have aided your Hamiltonian industries, but not our Jeffersonian agriculture. Y'all were just trying to develop your New England factories into something that would rival the profitable and well-established factories of Britain. Meanwhile, you had Pennsylvanians in particular, but many Northern industrialists, petitioning the government to make it more favorable for them, financially beneficial for them. The whole affair reeked of nepotism and corruption. <laughs> Furthermore, I- You're right. I am? Yes, that is what happened. Wait, we actually agree on something? Yes, the moral tariff was unquestionably favorable for Northern interests and detrimental to Southern ones. But it wasn't passed through Congress until March of 1861. And if Southern states hadn't started seceding in December of 1860, then there's no fucking way it would have gotten passed. So, rather than being the cause of secession, the moral tariff happened as a result of secession. Hmm. In any case, it was just one of many grievances that Southern Democrats had with Northern Republicans. The principal one was the Republican stance on slavery. Saying the Civil War was only about slavery is ignorant. The Civil War was extremely complicated. What about the tariff of 1861? I literally just All the dozens about of that. newspapers speaking of a tax war. Most historians agree that the Civil War was too complicated to tear. What about the 70% of men who didn't own slaves and fought for what? Well, at least you got the percentage of slave owners right this time. Those newspapers you're referring to were mainly British rags, like the London Times. The Brits, they had a vested interest in keeping that transatlantic cotton trade going to fuel their own industries. Naturally, they sided with the Southern... Yeah, one of the things I find most fascinating about this time period is Britain simultaneously has this crusade against slavery going on. 
right? Where they're going and forcibly, you know, attack like they're attacking other nations for having slave trade while at the same time helping american slavery uh in an attempt to make money off of it or you know to keep the, the textiles industry running and it, it's very much like a uh trying to take the competition out through the justificate like j justified by moral action right moral but benevolence but in reality it was just money and Democrats who were all about free trade, and they shared their criticisms of the moral tariff, which was extremely protective. The Confederate government desperately needed British assistance if they had any hope of winning the war. So they encouraged that myth that the war was being fought over taxes, Britain, of course, being very anti-slavery at the time. But some British abolitionists knew better. The philosopher John Stuart Mill wrote an opinion piece in a pro-union newspaper in 1862 in which he correctly stated, There is a theory in England that on the side of the North, the question is not one of slavery at all. The North, it seems, have no more objection to slavery than the South have. Their leaders never say one word implying disapprobation of it. They are ready, on the contrary, to give it new guarantees, to renounce all that they have been contending for, to win back if opportunity offers the South to the Union by surrendering the whole point. If this be the true state of the case, what are the Southern chiefs fighting about? Their apologists in England say that it is about tariffs and similar trumpery. They say nothing of the kind. They tell the world, and they told their own citizens when they wanted their votes, that the object of the fight was slavery. The world knows what the question between the North and South has been for many years, and still is. Slavery alone was thought of, alone talked of. Slavery was battled for and against, on the floor of Congress and in the plains of Kansas. On the slavery question exclusively was the party constituted which now rules the United States. On slavery, Fremont was rejected. On slavery, Lincoln was elected. The South separated on slavery and proclaimed slavery as the one cause of separation. He goes on to predict that as the war continued, the cause of preserving the Union would become inseparable from the cause of abolishing slavery. That came to pass when Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation. After that, as a direct result of that, the British public became very uncomfortable with the idea of supporting the Confederacy. In your eagerness to blame white people in every video you make, you've forgotten about the nullification crisis. South Carolina nearly rebelled during Andrew Jackson's presidency over just such a protectionist tariff. That's true, but as John C. Calhoun himself pointed out in 1830, I consider the tariff act as the occasion rather than the real cause of the present unhappy state of things. The truth can no longer be disguised that the peculiar domestic institution of the southern states and the consequent direction which that and her soil have given to her industry has placed them in regard to taxation and appropriations in opposite relation to the majority of the union. So in summary, protective tariffs were a big point of contention between North and South leading up to the Civil War, but it was ancillary to and directly influenced by the South's dependency on slave labor, which they would do anything to preserve and defend. You can eat shit. If the North <laughs> was so damn noble, why did the same damned army that invaded the South kill the American Indians? Sounds like bullshit to so, me. So we're back why don't you have a debate now. with a real person instead of playing with yourself? Stop whining because we have had so much pro-union one-sided crap. You get triggered when the tiger side is allowed to have their say. The South, U.S., everywhere south of the Canadian border. Both oh. sides were pro-slavery, but Confederacy just never lied. Everywhere south of the Canadian... Man, even in Canada they had it for a certain amount of time. Not oh. about it. Now I'm gonna bring some Confederate Ooh. flag waving oh. hip hop tub and black dance party. Wait, did we run out of comments? Tubs mm. creating the ultimate dilemma. I think we ran you out of comments. You can pretend you can claim Listen, man. that everybody flying the rebel flag yeah. is racist. You know, have a meaningful connection with human beings. But we enjoy hip hop. Play outside or some shit. Over that mumble I'll see you later. Bye. Nowadays. Is that actually part of the comment? What is this comment even about? What? Now I'm going to bring some kind of flag waving, hip hop, turban, black dance party, tubs creating the ultimate dilemma. Claim everyone with the rebel flag is racist or enjoy hip hop over the mumble rap. What is this comment even fucking about? Man, this this is just like somebody's fucking hardcore schizo rant. Like, what is this even about? The rebel flag uh, is racist. You know, I have a meaningful connection with human beings. But we enjoy hip hop. Play outside or some shit. Over that mumble I'll see you later. Bye. Nowadays. I feel like that went well. <laughs> Man, I I honestly I am that that last comment. I'm just so confused. That that.
A hundred percent. That's just somebody's schizo rant. Like, it's not gonna. Like, like hip hop. Like, I'm guessing by hip hop they mean uh, or hip hop, they mean like that kind of like southern rap that's like really popular now, where it's like country rap. I mean, it it is a very good subgenre, but I don't know what the fuck that has to do with anything. Like, it's just like this random fucking schizo rant. Oh my god. Oh, anyway, let me know what you think below. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one.